We remember today all people who died and served in the Solomon Islands during World War II. Within six months of fighting, some 1,600 Allied troops were killed. More than 4,000 were wounded and thousands more died from disease. Among Imperial Japanese forces, an estimated 24,000 died. And no one, no one, can say for certain how many Solomon Islanders lost their lives when their home became a battlefield. Today, as we have been every day since the war ended, former combatants are united here as partners in peace. We have seen some around the world who seem to have forgotten the awful lessons learned here, or perhaps never took them to heart in the first place. Leaders who believe that others must be diminished if they are to rise. Leaders who believe that coercion, pressure, and violence are tools to be used with impunity. Leaders who believe that the principles and institutions the world set up after the Second World War, the rules-based international order that has enabled peace and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific and around the world for generations, can be ignored and undermined, diminished. ...and presence across the Pacific, including by opening embassies in Tonga, Kiribati, and right here in Solomon Island. We're truly honored to be here because, as was stated eight years ago, it changed the Marine Corps history. It changed the history of the Solomon Islands and it changed the history of our nation. Now, I stand before you as a Marine, but this was a joint battle, a joint battle with all the services and various nations fighting together and today representing that very element is Lieutenant General George Smith from 1st Marine Expeditionary Force and the current 1st Marine Division CG, the Blue Diamond, Ben Watson, has returned to the sacred ground. Read about what our predecessors think about us. We're worried about when they look down, what would they think? And Ms. Secretary, I think with his time in combat operations here, and all the work he did for world peace. When he returned first, he would be proud of his daughter, and he would be proud of the United States Marine Corps and the Joint Force, and certainly he would be very happy to see the success of Solomon Islands and wish the utmost best for this great, great country. Ladies and gentlemen, Semper Fidelis. peoples of the United States. Prince <laughs> Glinka, on behalf of the Armed Forces of the United States of America. And the Australian High Commissioner, His Excellency Lachlan Strawn, on behalf of the on behalf of the Japanese Ministry of Defence.
<laughs> Flying from its yard arm, the United States Marine Corps service flag. I like Monroe's actions occurred relatively early in the U.S. campaign uh, in the Pacific, and as we all know, fighting would rage around the world for three more years. The world has changed much in the past 80 years, and it will continue to change, but some things remain the same. Strong, durable alliances and partnerships between longtime friends are the glue that hold us together and keep a peaceful, free, and rules-based world. The government and peoples of the United States. mission to Solomon Islands, Mr. Vasse Koma. Lieutenant General Stephen Water, Commander of the United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific. military personnel, private sector representatives. A little more than six weeks since landing on Guadalcanal that the 1st Raider Battalion of the U.S. Marine Corps under the command of Lieutenant General Merritt A. Edson fought off a determined effort by Imperial Japanese forces to retake the airstrip the Marines had dubbed Henderson Field. The battle of Guadalcanal would continue to rage for months after the fight here on Bloody Ridge, in the air, overhead, in the surrounding seas, and of course, throughout the jungles, beaches, and villages of the island of Guadalcanal. What so many history books overlook, however, is the critical role that Solomon Islanders played in the making that history possible. It was thanks to Solomon Island scouts and coast watchers that Lieutenant Colonel Edson and his forces were alerted that enemy soldiers were massing some 20 miles away from this spot near the village of Tasamboco. A raid that revealed an attack was being planned to attempt to recapture Henderson Field. It was thanks to Solomon Islanders then that the Marines were able to assemble their defense of Henderson Field and to prepare for the assault on Bloody Ridge. Thank <laughs> you. 